Hello and welcome to Semiconductor Club, where we talk about semiconductor engineering. Please show a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. In this video we will be discussing, ASIC design flow why to adopt the ASIC design flow, how does the ASIC design cycle work. So, about the ASIC design flow, the journey of designing an ASIC, application specific integrated circuit, is long and involves a number of major steps, moving from a concept to specification to tape outs. Although the end product is typically quite small, measured in nanometers, this long journey is interesting and filled with many engineering challenges. Now, secondly, why to adopt the ASIC design flow? To ensure successful ASIC design, engineers must follow a proven ASIC design flow which is based on a good understanding of ASIC specifications, requirements, low power design and performance, with a focus on meeting the goal of right time to market. Every stage of ASIC design cycle has EDA tools that can help to implement ASIC design with ease. Moving on to the last part, how does the ASIC design cycle work? It involves 11 steps which are discussed below. Step 1. Chip specification This is the stage at which the engineer defines features, microarchitecture, functionalities, hardware, software interface, specifications, time, area, power, speed, with design guidelines of ASIC. Two different teams are involved at this juncture. Design team, generates RTL code. Verification team, generates test bench. Step 2. Design entry, functional verification. Functional verification confirms the functionality and logical behavior of the circuit by simulation on a design entry level. This is the stage where the design team and verification team come into the cycle where they generate RTL code using test benches. This is known as behavioral simulation. Step 3. RTL block synthesis, RTL function Once the RTL code and test bench are generated, the RTL team works on RTL description. They translate the RTL code into a gate-level netlist using a logical synthesis tool that meets required timing constraints. Thereafter, a synthesized database of the ASIC design is created in the system. When timing constraints are met with the logic synthesis, the design proceeds to the design for testability DFT, techniques. Step 4. Chip partitioning This is the stage wherein the engineer follows the ASIC design layout requirement and specification to create its structure using EDA tools and proven methodologies. This design structure is going to be verified with the help of HLL programming languages like C++ or System C. Step 5. Design for test, DFT, insertion with the ongoing trend of lower technology nodes. There is an increase in system on chip variations like size, threshold voltage and wire resistance. Due to these factors, new models and techniques are introduced to high-quality testing. ASIC design is complex enough at different stages of the design cycle. Telling the customers that the chips have fault when you are already at the production stage is embarrassing and disruptive. Step 6. Floor planning, blueprint your chip, after, DFT, the physical implementation process is to be followed. In physical design, the first step in RTL to GDSII design is floor planning. It is the process of placing blocks in the chip. It includes block placement, design portioning, pin placement, and power optimization. Floor plan determines the size of the chip, places the gates and connects them with wires. While connecting, engineers take care of wire length and functionality which will ensure signals will not interfere with nearby elements. Step 7. Placement Placement is the process of placing standard cells in row. A poor placement requires larger area and also degrades performance. Various factors, like the timing requirement, the net lengths and hence the connections of cells, power dissipation should be taken care. It removes timing violation. Step 8. Clock tree synthesis Clock tree synthesis is a process of building the clock tree and meeting the defined timing, area and power requirements. It helps in providing the clock connection to the clock pin of a sequential element in the required time and area, with low power consumption. In order to avoid high power consumption, increase in delays and a huge number of transitions, certain structures can be used for optimizing CTS structure such as mesh structure, H-tree structure, X-tree structure, fishbone structure and hybrid structure. Step 9. Routing as we are moving towards a lower technology node, Engineers face complex design challenges with the need for implanting millions of gates in a small area. In order to make this ASIC design routable, placement density range needs to be followed for better QOR. 
Placement density analysis is an important parameter to get better outcomes with less number of iterations. Step 10. Final verification, physical verification and timing. After routing, ASIC design layout undergoes three steps of physical verification, known as sign-off checks. This stage helps to check whether the layout working the way it was designed to. Step 11. GDS2, Graphical Data Stream Information Interchange. In the last stage of the tapeout, the engineer performs wafer processing, packaging, testing, verification and delivery to the physical IC. And that was it for today guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching.